He gets away from Josh Sweat. Keeps the play alive. Ross for Connor. One-handed catch. What a day for James Connor. Man, optimism is in the air. As we just saw in week 17, the Arizona Cardinals went to Philadelphia and beat the Eagles. It was the return of Jonathan Gannon. And yes, they did get that win. The final score was 35 to 31 Cardinals. Man, guys, it was a slow start for the Redbirds in this one. A little bit of a weird game. In the first half, there was a 99-yard interception return by the Eagles, and they led the game uh, 21-6 to at halftime. So kind of looking like it was going uh, how everyone thought it was, but Cardinals could not be counted out in the second half. It was all Redbirds. James Conner found the end zone twice. Michael Carter had a six-yard run for a touchdown, and Tallman's favorite, Michael Wilson, hauled in a five-yard touchdown. Kyler Murray was looking like himself and maybe even the best we've ever seen. So like I said, guys, plenty of room for optimism. But what did uh, what did you think of that week 17, Michael? Ooh, I know a lot of people are still on the fence because you talk about the implications from that win and what happens with your draft pick. I think we saw the Cardinals fall from two to four. And I don't know if they win the Seattle game, they might fall even farther down, but Love going in and playing spoiler against any team, man. That's what it's all about when you're having a struggle of a season, right? You go in and you basically kill Philly's chances of winning the uh, the NFC East, and they did it in a dominating way, man. What a second half, four scoring drives. I mean, if you just look at some of these stats, had 20 more minutes in possessions, 15 more first downs, almost 200 more total yards. We know that it was really a great dominating force on the ground from James Conner and uh, Michael Carter. I loved it, man. I loved it a lot. Greg Dorch keeps playing himself into a contract. He's going to get a nice payday, hopefully. And hopefully it's by us. But very impressive. I had the same type of feeling as Monty on the the sideline after the game, just going crazy and wild with the team because it was such a huge win and such a big boost for this team going into the next year. So loved everything about it, man. And some people were kind of clowning Monty for his reaction, saying like, oh no, the high draft pick is slipping away from us. But I don't think that's the case. I think this is exactly what he wants to see. I mean, some people don't believe in being able to carry momentum from the end of one season into the next, but this is exactly what I think I wanted to see from Kyler Murray, and I think I speak for a lot of Cardinals fans when this team was kind of on the fence. There had been that narrative of, are they going to keep Kyler? Are they going to move on from him? There's a lot of quarterbacks in this draft class, but after the game, Jonathan Gannon was on the local radio, and he said, no, Kyler's our guy. We're going to stick with him. So that means we don't have to waste a pick on a quarterback and we can get some other pieces to help improve this football team. I mean, Tom, and what do you think about those broader implications and just the game in general? Well, the game was incredible. I mean, if, if you want to sit here and cry, if you're a Cardinals fan about, oh my God, now we're, we're down in the draft order. Now we're probably picking number four. Who cares about that? This, this type of win the momentum that this team could potentially carry into the next season, the culture that we're building right now, watching this coaching staff build with this core of players with such little talent and what they're able to achieve, that's way better than any draft status, any high draft pick. I mean, come on, guys. Marvin Harrison Jr. is not going to solve our problems, right? We can sit here and say, oh, it would be really nice to have a generational talent like that added to the team. Maybe a little Anquan Bolden-esque, Larry Fitzgerald-esque, right? But – He's not going to solve our problems. This team has so many holes, and we can still get a very good player at the top of that draft. So what this win was huge, not only for, like I said, the culture reasons, but also for Jonathan Gannon going back to his old home. You know, this this game on the schedule, right when, when it came out, we were like, ooh, this is going to be a good matchup. Gannon's going back to play in Philadelphia against the Eagles, his former team, where the Eagles fans did nothing but absolutely shit on Jonathan Gannon because he lost them the Super Bowl, right? So it, this is just – it was it was so sweet to see him go in there, get that win in Philadelphia, and just send the, send the Eagles into a spiral right now because that team was already trending downward. And, man, are they panicking right now in Philadelphia. And it's even better that – the Diamondbacks just did that to Philadelphia's baseball team 
a couple months ago, and it's just incredible. Right now, we are arch enemy number number one, Phoenix, Arizona. We are living rent free right now in every Philadelphia sports fan's mind, and it was an incredible win for Jonathan Gannon. And just remember all the tampering stuff that went into it, where you know we ended up having to to swap third round picks. Uh, with with the Eagles in this this recent draft, and you guys know who returned that 99 yard interception for a touchdown? It was the guy that the Eagles drafted with that pick that we gave to the Eagles. So it was it was that was kind of weird, right? But um, it was incredible seeing Kyler bounce back from kind of a, an awful first half where we dominated the first half, dominated all the stats, dominated time of possession, but we were down 21 to six. It was it was a very strange half, but. Um, seeing him come back in the second half and play his best game of the season, um, overall his best half of football that we've seen in a very long time from him, that is extremely promising, and he's absolutely our guy for the future. If you're a Cardinals fan, you should be ecstatic right now the way this team performed. Who cares if we're drafting fifth, sixth, or seventh? This is an overall win for everybody. Yeah, and it really feels like it's all starting to come together. I mean, despite all the injuries and the mix and match in the running back room, the Cardinals are ranked sixth in rushing offense in the entire NFL, which sounds crazy, but it's true. Go look it up. I just think that's that's reason to be optimistic right there. Like I said, it feels like it's all starting to come together. Hopefully they can continue to build on this. And whether we get Marvin Harrison or an offensive lineman or a corner or whoever in the draft, I think it's only going to help to take the best available player that's on the board. And if uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. really is their guy and they really want to get him, there's no reason they can't trade up because even if you have the fifth, sixth pick, you still have whatever the Houston pick is going to end up being 14, 15, 16. I'm not sure where they're at right now, but it's going to be an interesting week. Like this, this season's going right down to the wire. Is it what Kyler Murray has asked for? Hey, go, go get me Marvin Harrison Jr. and bring him here.